Welcome, this will be a quick video to show how I use Hugo and Flutter in conjunction to create a blog. If you want a more detailed write-up with links and resources, then check out the written tutorial. The link is in the description. For those of you that don't know, Hugo is a static site generator. It's very flexible, fast, and once you learn some of the terminology and templating, it's quite easy to use. You can use Hugo in whatever way you want. If you want to do extreme customization to create a complete static site, then you're free to do that. Or if you want to keep it simple, you can choose a theme, write some blog posts and run Hugo Build and publish your static site with the blog content. I'm by no means an expert on using Hugo, the exact opposite actually, but this video will show you how I use Hugo to generate a basic blog along with a static API source that can be consumed by another application. In this case, the Fun with Flutter web application. Please note that this is not a tutorial on how to use Hugo. There are better resources for that, which I link to in the blog post. For my purposes, I want to use Hugo in its most basic form. I use an already made theme and create blog posts. The theme that I use is named Slick. However, the real magic for me happens as a result of Hugo's ability to output to different file types. Instead of only generating static HTML files for the blog, Hugo allows you to, for example, output JSON files which can then be used as a static API of sorts. So the same markdown files you use to create the static site can be used to create a JSON API. Let's jump into some examples. We'll begin by demonstrating how Hugo is used to generate a static site. Okay, let's jump into Hugo. As I said, I use it in its most basic form. Um, I just did Hugo initialize and then I chose a theme. The theme that I'm using is called Slick and then I provide content. So all I'm doing is I provide posts. In this content directory, you can have different, different sections essentially for your application. And depending on the section, it would have different layouts. But all I'm doing at this moment is I'm providing a post folder. And then within this, here are the actual blog posts that I've written. Um, the majority of these are just empty posts that I just use as examples. And then let's just quickly show an example of how you would use Hugo. Um, so if you run a Hugo server dash D, hit run, then it will serve it locally. So if we jump to that, you can see it's on my local host at port 1313. And here is the actual blog. Very simple. I'm not doing anything special with the blog. Um, the theme that I'm using is, is um, pre, uh, clean free theme, pretty standard. Um, the magic actually happens on the fun with Flutter site. So for example, if we run to the actual fun with app from here, I query the fun with blog. So if we go to um, that URL, you can see it, it takes me to the fun with blog and I'm hosting this on Firebase. And this is where the actual magic happens. Um, the fun with app queries the blog for the data that it should be displaying. So that is what I'll be showing you next is how I'm using Hugo to basically serve a static API of what blog content is available. So when you use Hugo, what it does, it takes these markdown files and then generates them into HTML files. So what we want to do is we want to actually build Hugo. And once we build Hugo, it will take all these markdown files and generate it to static HTML. So the command for that is just Hugo. So running Hugo, you can see we now have a public folder. And this is the folder that we will send to our hosting provider or the folder that we will host. As I mentioned, I use Firebase. So when I run Firebase deploy, I'm deploying this public folder. And this public folder is just static files. For example, we have an index.html, which would be the homepage of the app. And this is what would be on the homepage. So as I said, what we want is we want you go to also host a JSON API endpoint. And as you can see, there is an index.json file as well. So this won't automatically be included. You would actually need to um, specify a layout file for Hugo to use as a template to generate this file. So let's jump into how I'm doing that. If we go to the config file, you can see I'm specifying the output types for the different sections of the um, blog. So at the home section, I'm also specifying a JSON output. And for the rest, I'm only specifying HTML outputs. So these HTML outputs are 
going to be controlled by the theme that we provide. So in the slick theme, you can see we have a layout and we have a default index.html. So you will use this index.html layout file to generate the static index.html file um, once you run Yugo publish. So what we want to do is we want to provide a JSON layout file and this will be named index.json.json. Um, this would look very confusing if you've never used Yugo before. Also, I don't have any nice uh, code highlighting for this file type. But um, yes, I will run you through exactly what I'm doing. But um, what you need to know is Yugo uses this as a template and it uses this to actually output our um, JSON file, our index.json file. So let's do some code formatting. And you can see um, this is literally just JSON data with all of my blog content. And at the moment, that's all I'm using to actually get the data from the um, fun with uh, blog firebase app and in the fun with app i'm just querying um, this index.json file so if we go index.json you can see it's the exact same file okay so let me quickly explain what i'm doing to actually get this to layout as is Okay, I will do my best to explain what I'm doing here. It's been a couple of weeks since I've actually implemented this. And as I said, I am by no means an expert on Yugo. Uh, the most, my most experience is doing this. And most of that was just Googling and kind of luck finding the correct solution. So let's begin um, by defining what this Scratch is. So Scratch is um, a method that's provided by Yugo uh, essentially to bypass um, like a scoping issue they had. Um, if I'm not, uh, I might be uh, wrong with that, but um, essentially what it does, it creates a, um, a variable that we can use no matter what scope we are in. And we can query that variable by calling .get on the scratch. For example, later I'm calling scratch.get and I'm saying I want the scratch that is named tags. And as you can see, this is essentially a, a variable that is, uh, has a top scope and this would be an array because we are defining it to be a slice. Then the next thing we're doing is we are iterating over all of the tags that are available on the site. So you can see we have this term called taxonomies and a taxonomy is a, um, a word to say it's a classification. So by classification, in this scenario, it would be the tags that are available. So each post is marked with certain tags. So a tag would be what this post pertains to. And what this range does, it goes over every single tag that is available. So I actually have a naming issue here. This should probably be singular as we're getting each tag individually on all of the, of all of the available tags. Then we're creating another scratch called pages. And then we are iterating over all of the pages that are on that tag. So we're getting the tag over here and then we're iterating over all of the pages associated to that tag. So for example, every page that could have the um, Flutter web tag as an example. And then what we're doing is we're taking this pages scratch and then we are adding adding a dictionary and a dictionary is a um, is basically a map so a key value pair so here we have the key which is URI and then the value would be the dot permalink and this dot is um, like a local scope it's like the scope we're in so the current scope we're in is the individual page so we're getting the permalink or the link of the blog post the URL link of that page and we're assigning it to this key. Same with the title and then for description and thumbnail. For the description and the thumbnail you can see we're calling dot params before we're calling dot thumbnail dot description. This is because description and thumbnail are taxonomies, taxonomies that I added. So those are user-defined tax taxonomies. So if we go to 
the config.toml, you can see um, I defined these two taxonomies, thumbnail and description. So these are uh, additional things that I can add to my blog post to um, better quantify what this blog post is uh, could be doing, or it could just be um, a way to store information that are accessible by this params attribute. Okay, so let's jump to our index.json file. As you can see, we have pages and we have tags. The What I've been talking about now was not this pages object. The page, it was actually the tags object. And then within the tags, we have um, an uh, object called pages. And that is the pages we have here. As I said, these pages iterate over the tag that, or the, the current tag that we're on. So it goes over all of the tags, takes the tag, looks for all the pages with that tag, and then adds them to this dictionary. And then we are actually adding that to this tag scratch. And we're saying the, the name of the tag. So that's the tag name that we're getting over here. And then we are getting all of the pages from the scratch. So we're taking um, the scratch pages and getting that value and then creating a new dictionary. And then we are just cleaning up and we're deleting the pages because once we do another iteration, we don't want it to continuously add to all of the pages. We want it to be clean. And then we have this object over here, tags, then the name of the tag, and then all of the pages. And then what we also want is we want a object that has all of the available pages that um, are on the site. And for that, it's much simpler. All we're doing is we're creating a scratch called all pages. And then we are doing a range, a range over all of the pages in reverse order of the, the date that it was created. And then we are adding to the scratch a dictionary with all of the content that we want. And then the last thing that we do is we create another dictionary all uh, this will be our complete JSON object and we give it a, a key of tag and then we define, give it this uh, scratch value of tags defined at the top and then we uh, have pages, we give it the scratch uh, all pages over here and then we pipe it so we send that to the JSON JSONify function and what that does it generates this JSON file for us. And yeah, that, all of that was a mouthful. Sorry if I couldn't explain it better. As I said, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not uh, too familiar on, on using Hugo. This is, uh, this is how I understood it as I um, was typing this out. Um, but yeah, this is what we need. Um, Hugo will look for this index.json.json file and it will, take that, it will take this file as a layout and it will generate the uh, index.json file we see here, depending on what blog content is available. And as I said, we then use this content and query that from the Flutter web application. So the next uh, part, I will show you how I'm using Flutter to query that data. Okay, so this is the last section. I'm just quickly gonna show you how I'm using Flutter to query for the um, blog content. Um, you can feel free to skip this. I'm not gonna go into detail on um, the patterns that I use or a lot of the code. I'm just quickly going to give you an overview. The rest is for future future sections or future videos, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm getting the URI, so the URL. And if we go to um, this method called blog data URL, that's just a uh, get method. And depending on if we're testing or in production, it just gets the correct environment URL. And there goes my phone. And um, Next, what I'm doing is I'm initializing a blog block. As I said, I'm not going to go into detail how I'm doing this, but what's important to know here is um, this blog block, uh, the block requires a blog repository. And to initialize the blog repository, we need to pass in the URI. So if we jump to the blog repository, um, it, we have the provided uh, blog data that we've given it. Uh, otherwise, it defaults to static a static file that's within my web directory. So if nothing is hosted or if I don't provide anything, it just uses the static file for testing. And then I am calling um, on this blog data provider. I'm calling fetch data. So if we jump to fetch data, 
that's just an HTTP request and that is the request that um, if we go to over here, that is the request that will um, get retrieved this index.json file. And then once we have that request, um, I'm just calling um, from JSON on this blog class and that converts the JSON into a blog object. So if we jump back to blog, you can see we have tags, we have pages, and we have a tag object and a page object. And then in the rest of the app, I'm using this blog object, and that is essentially that. Uh, I just realized that this blog uh, from JSON should probably be in a try catch in case there is an exception so yeah I'll, I'll add that now and yeah but that's that i hope you enjoyed the video it was a bit of a long one a bit of stumbling on my end uh, sorry for that uh, it's been a while since i've actually implemented all of this code and i, I forgot a bit of it but yeah that's that uh, feel free to check out the actual post that i've written as I'm doing post now, um, you can actually do get the written article as well. In some ways, the video is much more detailed. I don't go into as much detail in the blog post, but if you want resources or you want the links and um, the um, files that I use to help me, um, yeah, check out the blog post. But cool, yeah, catch you in the next video. Until next time, bye.